Heavenly Father, on this day, as we gather together in your name, we know that you are here. You have promised to be here. And we trust in your promise. Lord, as we are gathered here, help us to know what a special place this is and how special it is to be here in your presence. Help us not just today as we're here with mixed emotions, perhaps, as we're here with hurts and pains, but help us each and every day. All this we ask, all this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Friends of Christ, grace to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. You probably didn't notice him, but, but I kept this guy with us again today because I'm not quite done. One of the greatest pieces of scripture that we had, we heard last Sunday in that amazing 23rd Psalm of David. The question is, how can we just hear it once and then wait for the next year or two years until it comes back again? It is so good, it is so packed with what we need. Like that good book, you just, after you start it, not that I read, but... But that good book after you start it that you just can't put down. Or like that movie that you start watching, you just can't stop watching it and hope that it'll come around again. We've got to keep that image of a shepherd and sheep around us for at least, at least another Sunday. You heard those opening words last week, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And we talked about what it means being so much in the arms of the shepherd that we are not in want or not in need for anything. And then comes those next words. He makes me lie down in green pastures. And again, when I was younger, you know, sometimes it's just that wording. And I'm going, you mean God forces me to lie down? He forces me to lay here or to lay over there. I, I didn't think that he ordered people like that. But once again, I got a little bit smarter and I got to know and understand a little bit more about what that means. As I said, we don't have a whole ton of sheep farmers around here. But raising of sheep since biblical days has been a norm. Sheep, and maybe a lot of people don't know this, but sheep are really fidgety critters. In fact, it does not take a lot to scare sheep. Sometimes, something as little as a rabbit running across a field will send an entire flock of sheep scattering. They get spooked easy. In fact, Philip Keller, who I talked about last week in his book, talked about a fact that one time a, uh, a neighbor came to visit him, and his sheep were in one of his front pastures, and they were fenced in, and this neighbor got out, and with him he brought his new little Pekingese puppy. And he put that puppy on the ground, the puppy saw the sheep started barking, and over 200 of his sheep went scattering all over the place. I'm thinking that little Pekingese kid, puppy was pretty proud of himself and how tough he was. But he talked about fears. And here's how he put it. He said, sheep cannot lie down in comfort and in calm until four criteria are met. Number one, they have to be free from fear, from animals, from rustlers, from things that could harm them. They have to be free from fear. 
They have to be free from, and I love the way he puts it, from friction within. Oh, we're going to talk about that a little bit. They have to be free from parasites. Those things that bug us. And then they have to be free from hunger. And once they have all of those things, then and only then can they lie down in green pastures and have that joy. Freedom from fear. You know, it's not just sheep that get afraid. It's not just sheep that are wondering what in the world is going to happen next. Whether it be our world, whether it be our economy, whether it be just the rain stopping. We have fears. However, when it comes to a shepherd and the sheep, there is one thing that takes those fears away. And that is when the sheep are with the shepherd. When the shepherd stands out in the field with them, when the sheep can see that shepherd, there's a calm. They understand that things maybe aren't that bad. Why do we gather together in worship? Why do we come to God's house? I think first and foremost, to take away our fears. To know that in this place God is here, that God has promised to be here, and that he has promised to protect us and to make things just a little bit better. I used to say it, and I think a lot of pastors do it, that one of the jobs, one of the tasks of a pastor is to make you on a Sunday morning feel just a little bit better leaving here than you did when you came in. And if we don't do that, then maybe we need to figure out what we've done wrong. The shepherd is here. The shepherd is with us. He takes away our fear. Now, we don't have too many shepherds anymore that are out in the fields with sheep. But the next time you drive by a flock of sheep in a field, I bet you're going to find a donkey out there. And if you don't know why, it's because donkeys are very territorial and they will protect anything that is there with them. Like our shepherd does. His job is to protect us, and he will protect us because he's promised to do so. Take away our fears. And then that friction from within. You know, in, 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 in sheep herds, there are dominant ones that try to take advantage of the other ones. Usually it's an old you who just wants the best spot to drink, the best spot to eat, the best spot to do anything, and she'll go and she'll butt any other sheep so that she gets her way. Boy, it's no wonder why Jesus decided to use the image of sheep with us. Because we're like that, too. We have our own little infighting, you know, and probably the place that we see it more than any place is in churches. The Apostle Paul had more problems with the church at Corinth than any other church that he started in his missionary tours. And it was the only church in his missionary tours that was not being bombarded from the outside. The city of Corinth and the Corinth rulers and leaders kind of let the church be. It was imploding from the inside. That happens to so many churches. And in fact, in my years as an intentional interim pastor, that has been the issue almost every time. Those little squabbles. Those little things that 
are just meant to find out who's best, who's better, who has more status than the other. A shepherd can't take that dominant you, button, heads with all the other sheep. The shepherd has to do something about it. The shepherd has to stop it. My guess is it takes a lot of work to butt heads with everyone. My guess is probably those sheep at the bottom probably feel the most contented because nobody's bugging them. Nobody wants last place. Free from those infights. Free from those frictions that bother us. The sheep has to be free from that. The sheep has to be free from parasites. Now, for sheep, that makes sense, right? You know, we know that with cattle. We know that with, with all animals that we raise. Um, summertime especially is awful. Absolutely awful. It's going to cost money to go and get the salves and the ointments and the sprays that are going to keep the flies and the mosquitoes and the bugs off the animals. Because only when they're free from those parasites, those little things that bug us, can we feel free and free from fear. It'd be kind of fun if I spent the rest of this sermon, and I'd probably have to spend several others, finding out from everybody what bugs me. What bugs you? No, I'm not going to ask you. <laughs> I'll tell you what bugs me, though. And I've had to learn that I've got to stop doing this. What bugs me is when I go into a fast food restaurant and I'm not served fast. It's like, okay, if you're not going to serve me fast, take that name off of you. I waited last week, one evening, 20 minutes to get two cheeseburgers that they had messed up in my order from the takeout and from the drive through So I went in there and stood there and waited 20 minutes for them to bring me my two cheeseburgers. The guy behind me was just shaking his head. The guy behind him was shaking his head, and then a guy, three folks back, came in and ordered two Happy Meals, each with a cheeseburger, and I watched my two cheeseburgers go into each one of those Happy Meals. <laughs> and I just, I had to stop, and I had to go, okay, come on, this shouldn't bug me. This, this is not the world's greatest tragedy. Don't do this. That's when you got to just take a breath and say, Holy Spirit, come to me. Because that is one of the jobs and tasks that the Holy Spirit takes on with joy. He is with us always to take those parasites and those things that bug us away. Freedom from fear. Freedom from the infights. Freedom from parasites. And the last thing that the sheep have to have is freedom from hunger. The shepherd does a lot of work getting those green pastures ready. If you stop to think about it in biblical days, King David, all the others in Palestine, raised sheep in a land that was not meant to raise anything, really. They had to make sure their pastures were perfect. They had to dig, they had to dig, they had to plant the right seeds and everything. They had to make sure that there was an irrigation system for water. They had to do all of that thing, but once they got it done, those sheep knew that there would be lush grass to eat. Those sheep knew that there would be fresh, clean water. Then and only then, with all of those things being taken away, all those fears, they could lie down. He maketh me lie down in green pastures. Folks, we know 
that this has been a tough winter. We know it's been a tough spring. But we also know that God knows this. And God is with us. And God is here to take away those fears from us so that we will lie down in green pastures. Amen.